Hello, my name is Dustin Berger. I'm a research scientist with Regenix, and I'd like to take a moment to talk about non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and their effects on mesenchymal stem cells. I will be reviewing the most recent in vitro literature. Before we dive into the literature, I'd like to take a moment to talk about the biological pathway upon which non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, exert their principal function. This pathway is known as the arachidonic acid pathway. Within this pathway, phospholipids, which comprise the cell membrane, are converted into arachidonic acid by an enzyme known as phospholipase A. Now, arachidonic acid can be subsequently converted into prostaglandin H2 by an enzyme known as cyclooxygenase 1. Cyclooxygenase 1 is expressed constitutively in various cells and tissues, including those of the synovial lining layer. This enzyme plays an important role in maintaining tissue homeostasis through the production of cytoprotective prostaglandins. In the presence of pro-inflammatory cytokines, such as interleukin-1 beta, tumor necrosis factor alpha, and interleukin-6, cellular enzyme levels of phospholipase A, as well as an inducible form of cyclooxygenase, known as cyclooxygenase 2, become greatly elevated. This results in the production of prostaglandins that are inflammatory and sustain inflammation and pain. Now, in the case of osteoarthritis, cyclooxygenase 2 is expressed in the sublining layers, particularly in the vasculier endothelial cells, infiltrated mononuclear inflammatory cells, synovial fibroblasts, and chondrocytes. The upregulation of cyclooxygenase 2 coincides with the production of prostaglandin E2 which is a major pro-inflammatory prostaglandin. One potential option to limit the inflammation and pain associated with osteoarthritis is through the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, such as aspirin, ibuprofen, and naproxen. Now these drugs function by inhibiting the cyclooxygenase enzyme, which would then prevent the conversion of arachidonic acid into downstream pro-inflammatory prostaglandins. Now, one potential consequence of NSAID use is that arachidonic acid can build up, resulting in programmed cell death, also known as apoptosis. That being said, how does the use of NSAIDs affect mesenchymal stem cell viability, proliferation, and downstream differentiation? To answer this question, we turn to the most recent literature. Published in the American Journal of Translational Research in 2017, Fan and colleagues demonstrate that aspirin inhibits the proliferation of human synovium-derived mesenchymal stem cells. Over the course of multiple experiments, the authors demonstrate increasing concentrations of aspirin to significantly limit the number of cells as well as the number of colonies that grow out in culture. Additionally, through cell cycle analysis and the use of flow cytometry, the authors revealed that in the absence of aspirin, 45% of the cells are either in the S or the G2M phases, implying that they're preparing to undergo cell division. Now contrast that with cells grown in 2.5 millimolar aspirin, and only 21% of the cells are actively preparing for cell division. Now the results of this suggest that Aspirin inhibits the proliferation of these MSCs by arresting the cell cycle in the G0, G1 phase of growth. To confirm this finding, the authors looked at the expression level of cyclin enzymes, which are critical to the process of cell division. What they found was that with increasing concentrations of aspirin, both protein as well as gene expression levels of cyclin D decreased. Now, cyclin D is important to the cell cycle process because high levels are required for a cell to leave the G1 phase of growth and enter the S phase, where the DNA is actively synthesized in preparation for cell division. In a similar study published in 2009 in the journal Cell Proliferation, Dang and colleagues revealed aspirin to induce programmed cell death or apoptosis in mesenchymal stem cells. The authors in this study utilized a cell surface marker known as a Nexin-5 that is associated with cells undergoing an apoptotic process. In this study, the authors revealed increasing concentrations of aspirin to increase the percentages of cells that were positive for this apoptotic marker. Additionally, 
the authors revealed that signaling molecules in a key biological pathway known as the Wnt beta catenin pathway are capable of overriding aspirin's detrimental effects in inducing apoptosis. In this study, mesenchymal stem cells that were pre-treated with a Wnt signaling molecule known as Wnt 3A demonstrated significantly reduced apoptosis when treated with aspirin compared to MSCs that were treated with aspirin alone. A third study, published in the European Journal of Pharmacology earlier this year, confirmed the findings of the first two studies. In this study, Howe and colleagues demonstrated increasing concentrations of aspirin to inhibit the proliferation of MSCs while increasing the percentage of apoptotic cells. While the authors show increasing aspirin concentration to inhibit MSC growth and promote cell apoptosis, they also show aspirin to enhance cardiomyocyte differentiation. In this figure, the authors demonstrate increasing concentration of aspirin to result in greater expression of cardiac troponin T, a critical component of the cardiac muscle contractile unit. However, not all differentiation events are supported by the presence of NSAIDs. In this 2015 study, published in Tissue Engineering, the authors examined the effects of naproxen on chondrogenesis of human MSCs. What they show is initially, after three days in culture, expression levels of cartilage-specific genes such as agrican, collagen-2, and SOX9 are significantly increased over their respective control. However, after a few more days in culture, one can see that gene expression levels of all these cartilage markers are significantly less than that of the, the positive control. Additionally, after 21 days in culture, the presence of glycosaminoglycans, a positive marker for cartilage differentiation, is significantly reduced in the cultures treated with naproxen. Other studies have examined the effects of NSAIDs during osteogenic differentiation of human MSCs. In this 2010 study, published in Stem Cells and Development, you and colleagues demonstrated two different NSAIDs to reduce the viability of MSCs. Moreover, while not significant, the authors demonstrate that increasing concentration of these NSAIDs does reduce the amount of mineralization observed in culture when these MSCs are treated in the absence of the pro-inflammatory cytokine IL-1 beta. However, when IL-1 beta is present, one can see that the amount of mineralization in culture is significantly reduced with increased concentration of these NSAID drugs. Interestingly, the authors reveal that this inhibition of osteogenesis by NSAIDs is reversible. For instance, when these two drugs are added to culture, bone differentiation, osteogenic differentiation does not occur. However, when these drugs are placed in culture for a period of time and then removed, indicated in this figure by these arrows, we can see that two weeks later, mineralization does occur in both the presence of celecoxib as well as naproxen. This data implies that while osteogenesis cannot occur in the presence of NSAIDs, once NSAIDs are removed from the environment, these MSCs are capable of differentiating into bone. And that concludes our review of the literature. In summary, the in vitro results presented reveal NSAIDs to reduce MSC viability, inhibit MSC proliferation, and impair MSC differentiation into cartilage as well as bone.